Amanda Ledworth, welcome to the Gut Summit. Hi Kale, thank you for having me. Thanks for joining me. We, we're we here in Perth and I don't get to come over here a lot, but when I do, I love sitting down to have a chat with you because we've worked together a little bit for the last couple of years in yeah. some sort of context. How do you describe what you do? So my background is as a naturopath and I've been in the health industry for about 15 years now. Uh, I guess I've had my own journey in the area of gut health and uh, it's always been a really big focus on my, I guess, information and my treatment plans and how I've helped, you know, with my clients and uh, a very big area of um, that is focusing on diet, which I know you do as well and helping to educate people uh, and then also using nutritional and herbal medicine as part of that treatment for people as well. So, uh, yeah, over the years, uh, I guess, you know, diving more into the information and all the new research around gut health. I do think about three years ago thinking that I knew everything there was to know <laughs> in the area of gut health and yeah. now I think I feel like I hardly know anything compared to what we now, mm. you know, think the information that there is, especially about the microbiome. So I know that word is thrown around a lot now. Yeah. I've even seen it on TV ads. Yeah, well, this <laughs> so. is the thing. I mean, it's one of those topics where I guess the more you uncover, the more you realize how much more there is to learn about it and, and right. I guess that's what we're trying to do with the summit and the events and stuff is mm. to try and educate people on that but also leave room for the natural evolution of what will be discovered in the next 10 20 definitely, years definitely. what's exciting you most about that oh it's so exciting I guess if you you know look back even only five years ago we yes there were probiotic supplements and we know okay if you take a probiotic that's going to help with your with your gut health but we had no idea to the level of different bacteria and you know beneficial bacteria and you know I guess that good and that bad it's definitely a lot more complex than that uh, and then looking at you know the importance of the gut lining and you know all, all those different yeah areas of health uh as far as really helping the body i guess to deal with inflammation is yeah. is a big part of it so and uh yeah so i guess now seeing that there is just constantly new research um even for myself i'd say even in the last 12 months the amount of information that <laughs> i have now from you know from the the research and scientific studies and then in combination with the gut microbiome testing is yeah just amazing well let's talk about the testing because that's our topic for today i'd love to know how it, i know how it all works but mm. a lot of people might not know mm -hmm. um the the exact process because it can be somewhat awkward but then after it's actually very, extremely fascinating yes definitely so uh, I use a company called Smart DNA, yep. and they specialize in microbiome testing and, and also genetic testing. So the reason they do the microbiome is because it is actually a DNA sequencing in how they identify the bacteria. So it's a really comprehensive test. Let's touch on that for one second yeah, before sure. you go on. The difference between culture plate testing yes. and the DNA sequence testing. That's it. So the culture testing has been around for a long time. Definitely is very beneficial as far as what we can identify if there's infection there. You know, some of the more general sort of levels of the microbiome as far as maybe your lactobacillus and your bifido, um, but not, not as specific as really looking at those individual species. And so now that's what a lot of the, the new technology that Smart DNA using in using a DNA sequencing. So they're looking at the DNA of the bacteria. Mm -hmm. So that enables them to identify every single species that's showing up. And so we can then still look at infection and look at all those beneficial, um, but realizing that we have groups or subgroups of bacteria, and then we have individual species. And so some of those different species now they're identifying uh, where we thought they were just part of, I guess a group was just one bacteria. We now know there are 20, 30, hundreds mm. of bacteria within those groups, and they all have different functions in the body as well. Yeah. yeah. So when you send out a test, what mm -hmm. does it look like when someone sort of goes through the process? What okay. <laughs> so uh, when someone contacts me, and uh, you know, or if I'm speaking to a client, I feel this is going to be the best option for their health. I either give if it's in person or I do a lot of online consults as well. I'll send them a uh, gut microbiome test kit. So it is a stool sample swab. Uh, anyone who's seen the gut movie yeah, <laughs> seen yeah. you to do that yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, so it is it is quite it is quite simple there is very you know detailed instructions on there as to how to do it people get a bit scared about it but it is quite simple and uh, then you send your sample off to smart DNA and they're based in Melbourne and they put it through their microbiome testing process mm -hmm. so that test takes about six weeks, sometimes a little bit shorter, but up to about six weeks. 
So what I usually do with clients is we start with an initial consultation um, and that's really important for me to find out uh, about their symptoms and background history and what their health goals are and everything that's going on for that person so that once I receive their test results I can really make their treatment plan and obviously taking that information to be very specific to yeah. themselves. And so, uh, yeah, so then once, once I receive their test results, we have another consultation that's either in person or it's online. Mm. I've got clients all over, all over Australia. I've got some, I've got a client in Hawaii, which I think came from all over yourself. The Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. people can go so, do it from all over the oh, world. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So Smart DNA do have, uh, yes, they do have that, um, yeah. authorization, I guess, yeah. to, yeah, to be able to take in from other countries. Yeah. So, which not every lab will do that actually. So with so, the, um, the six week interim. In, mm -hmm. in that time when people are waiting this is something that has been interesting for me to see in that some mm. people like to use that waiting period as an excuse to say well I won't do anything until I get my test results yes back. how do you sort of get because I mean the worst case scenario for them starting straight away on a healthy program is that mm -hmm. they end up in a better place to start their more strategic definitely plan from. definitely so I find, and I've changed this over the years that I've been doing this testing and, and running my program, and I found the clients who do start working with me straight away always get the best results. Yeah. So, you know, there is so much information that I can gather from that initial consult. So looking, you know, for example, other areas of their health that might need addressing too, especially the nervous system. Mm. So for clients that have a lot of stress, we really focus on those areas. Uh, so I, you know, focusing on diet and how we can reduce, you know, stress on the body as well, but really just improving that overall digestive system. Um, now, not every client that comes to see me for testing actually have uh, digestive symptoms as such, a lot do, uh, but some people may come for uh, for anxiety, for yeah. depression, um, for skin ailments, especially you know autoimmune issues like psoriasis is, is really common. And so while we're yeah while we're waiting, we can definitely start to work on uh, an anti-inflammatory diet, gut healing, looking yeah. at nutrients that might be deficient in the body. And so then we're already that one or even two steps ahead once we get those results. Mm. So the I guess the uh, then the difference of having that extra test information is then I create a really specific treatment plan for another three months based on that information on top of what we've already done. Love it. So, yeah. Let's take a step back. When the testing kit arrives in the mail, mm -hmm. what is the process? Because I it was sort of a self-exploratory yeah. <laughs> thing to try and collect your own poo without it getting wet. See, there's a the thing you can't actually let it go into the toilet. So yes, that's right. Is there like a so recommended strategy? There is. Um, Smart DNA do have a little diagram on their on yeah. their client forms with the test kit. Um, but usually it's it's just collecting, and there's only a very small sample that's needed. So either on some toilet paper or you know tissue paper or something, uh -huh. and uh, and then using you know the, there is a um, like a swab stick there, and then you've got a little test tube that you pop it into. Um, and uh, just give a little shake and make sure you put your labels on, <laughs> put your name and all that information that sometimes people yeah. forget to do. Yeah. So, and then for my clients, I always give them a reply paid uh, envelope as well, an express envelope, so that we're trying to cut down the time frame yeah. of postage because mm. that obviously adds into the testing time. Uh, so then they send it off and yeah, send a smart DA and receive it. They, it goes into their next batch yeah. of testing. There's been, I suppose, before we look into like a case study, there's been, um, no, I don't want to say criticism, but there's been, I guess, remarks made about the validity of microbiome testing mm -hmm. because the microbiome changes so rapidly. Yes. Someone could potentially do a cleanse or whatever for a couple of weeks and then do their testing thing just to try and influence the results. Mm. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And then how do you sort of back up the, the relevancy or the relevance of a microbiome test? Yeah, sure. So... In when I first speak to a client, if we're deciding whether they're going to do the testing, uh, I will ask certain questions, you know, to see, you know, so if someone has just, I did have a client recently, actually, she had just done, uh, before contacting me, she had done a, a two weeks, uh, two week cleanse, like a candida cleanse, which was quite different to her ordinary diet. Mm. And so, but she really wanted to do the testing. So I just suggested waiting a week or two mm. um, because she had just finished. She just had done that for two weeks. Uh, and uh, and then we did the testing. And so then it was still quite, you know, sort of an accurate picture. Yeah. I think if, 
I mean, I guess it's always it's using that information into you know based on whatever's going on for that client yeah. you know at that time. Um, but in the area of antibiotics, for example, if a client has and I've had that happen many times, a client's come to see me, they've been on antibiotics, they do need to wait two weeks before they do you yeah. know send off their test. So that also that is not yeah, yeah. showing. Um, you know is affected and I suppose so, you probably pick up a lot of people who are on a healthy diet But they're still quite imbalanced in the oh, microbiome definitely. Yeah, definitely And I guess that's where diet is super important as for, for our overall health, but definitely for our digestive health But I would say that most clients that come to see me and and you know for years now would have a, what we you know would say a relatively healthy diet mm. there's not too many people that come from just having no idea what they should eat and what they shouldn't eat and, and then saying, I want to do a microbiome. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's usually the more educated, it's the people who are really fit and healthy. I have a lot mm. of personal trainers, uh, a lot of people who, you know, eat mm. a very well balanced diet, but for whatever reason, for, you know, needing other previous antibiotics or medication or having a lot of stress, stress is a huge factor for a lot of people. Uh, for, especially for women, I guess, hormonal issues, you know, there's a lot of, um, effects on the microbiome mm. from being on the pill and there's a you know a lot of women even if they are thinking that they don't really want to be on that it's it's definitely something that you know a lot of women have been on in the past uh and that can really have yeah a big yeah a big effect so i do find that i guess using this testing is a great way to see what else we can do so yeah. i do focus on diet a lot but i use, also use a lot of herbal and, and nutritional medicine in my treatment plans yeah. as well smart Let's talk about this particular person. So this yes. is obviously the assay that someone receives back. This is, is the one that I received back in the gut movie mm -hmm. after getting the testing done. That's it. So talk us through it. Yes. So if I am doing an online consult with clients, I email it to them. Usually only just before the consult because otherwise they get really scared <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when they look at this and go, what does this mean? Yeah. Uh, so it, uh, it's a very detailed, it's a 12 page report. Um, but basically what it looks at is analyzing the microbiome on the three major levels. So we do that and this is what we can now understand from the DNA sequencing is that we do have these different levels of the microbiome. So uh, what I do is, is go through the report explaining those three levels so for example the first page is looking at the phylum level and the phylum level are the the family groups of bacteria mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of uh scientific you know pubmed um you know studies and information looking at and they will have all the different names firmicutes and bacteroidetes and proteobacteria and so uh, i guess a lot of people are not familiar with those because it's usually those I guess the species that we find in probiotic supplements mm -hmm. that people more are aware of. So this is kind of like the father species, yes. if you will. So human beings, but then within human beings, we have people of African origin, Australian origin, yes. Asian origin. Is that kind of a good analogy for yeah. it? Yeah, oh, well, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, um, and they do know actually that there is quite a different picture depending on where people have grown up and the type mm. of food they've eaten and we definitely do have different species of, of bacteria as well so uh you know i mean a lot of this information is based on i guess more the western diet yeah. but i mean that encompasses a large part of the world as well so uh yeah so just i mean for example with this first page we're looking at uh, you know, for example, the Firmicutes and the Bacteroidetes, these two different groups um, take up uh, the largest percentage of the microbiome. So, for example, on this report here, the Firmicutes, um, anywhere between 40 to 65 percent is what we ideally want to see to be, you know, beneficial for our health. And so when I'm going through and explaining this report to clients, I'm focusing on obviously where their mark is, you know, sitting as a percentage. Uh, but ideally, this green zone here is where we mm. want to see most of the markers. Um, obviously for a lot of people that's not the case because yeah. that's why we're doing this in the first place so sometimes I do I do see areas that, that are really balanced and that just gives us more information as to where else mm. their health issues might be coming from so this person had low firmicutes yes that's correct which I definitely see quite often uh, and it's a common picture to see low firmicutes and high bacteroidetes and what does that sort of result in so usually there's a uh, and this is very dietary not every area will be necessarily related to the diet sometimes it might be infection and other things uh -huh. leaking 
funky gut. Um, but for example, we do know that Firmicutes uh, is really, um, I guess, feeds off uh, fiber, particularly yeah. resistant starch fiber, a lot of prebiotic foods. And so usually when that's low, it is that's a big question. I would have already gone through a client's diet, but then I'll ask more questions as to you know, how much fiber. And I think a lot of people are not eating enough fiber mm. in their diet. And so we really focus on those resistant starch fibers that can feed this beneficial bacteria. But also this is an indication that the client may not uh, be dealing with inflammation very well because the firmicutes, um, obviously there's lots of bacteria within that group and lots of different functions, but one of its uh, major functions in the body is producing butyrate. Yeah. And butyrate is very anti-inflammatory. I know in your gut movie. Yeah, you know, and, and the whole section about, on that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, so looking at butyrate and how important that is for dealing with inflammation, mm. for repairing cells in the body, um, even identifying cells that are damaged um, yeah. so that they can either new cells can grow or those cells can be repaired if possible. Yeah. So butyrate um, is, is very important. And so those bacteria uh, have a major job in the body. Do you see this? consistently with people who are i mean there's like large tendency now for people to go more towards a very high protein high fat diet yes and i've seen friends do it almost carnivore yes you know and they're barely eating vegetables because they're worried about carbohydrates that's right do you see that I, I do see that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Reflected so in the I think there's a lot of benefits to a high protein or a ketogenic yeah. high fat diet. I do. I, I I think a ketogenic diet is really well suited to a lot of people, but there's there are. I guess like any diet, there's a right way and a wrong way yeah. to do that. So if you're focusing on all the protein and the fats and you're really cutting out your, your vegetables, um, then you're not giving your bacteria the fiber that it needs. Mm. So I've definitely seen pictures where people have been on long-term ketogenic and that would be a typical picture that their firmicutes is low. There's other areas that may even, you know, it may even result in, in leaky gut. Though at the same time, a ketogenic diet can actually be really beneficial for leaky gut. Mm. But I think it's, yeah, it's having that right amount of fiber um, and you know, and so that's something I educate my clients on: low carb, high fiber yep. vegetables. Uh -huh. And what are they, tangibly speaking? What are they? I guess your your green vegetables would be yeah. definitely coming to greens. Turn. Always, greens, same day, guys. always the greens. That's <laughs> it. So all your different, you know, your broccolis and yeah. your um, uh, you know, cabbage and you know, then your different um, cauliflowers and yeah. Yeah, cauliflower. That's really common on a ketogenic diet. Um, lots of herbs. Um, you know, lots of salad greens. Um, yeah, the, the green leaves. Yeah. Green leaves yeah. is probably the biggest. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So, and you can still have fruits, but it d there definitely is a yeah. limited number of fruits. You know, berries are probably the best, and yeah. berries are so great. And I mean, we've still got. Oh, sorry, go fun. ahead. No, no I was just going to say, oh. yeah, yeah. For, <laughs> we've still got lemons, limes, avocados, yes, tomatoes, which are cu cucumbers, which are still fruits, cucumbers, but they're exactly. low sugar. That's it. Good Celery, fiber. All those, yeah. yeah, yeah, and high, I guess, high um, water com content. Yes. Vegetables as well. Yeah. It's really, really important. So some people can become very dehydrated um, and there are different bacteria that may indicate that as well yeah um, you know in in the microbiome so for, you know for this particular client he came to see me with definitely a lot of inflammation so he has um, cirrhotic um, arthritis mm -hmm. which is an autoimmune issue that affects the joints but also the skin um, he had reflux uh, he had um, from a blood test with his GP he had liver enzymes that were high he also had high cholesterol all of those things are indicated to be signs of inflammation mm. in the body. And so definitely when I looked at his microbiome results, there were a lot of different markers that indicated his, I guess his microbiome's job in dealing with inflammation and that being definitely lowered. Yeah. Uh, and so really focusing on how we can how we can improve that. So for Mickey's, we bring those back up yep. with some more fiber, a lot of green leafy vegetables, salads. That's right. The bacteroidetes. Bacteroidetes. How do we pull those so back for this That's client? right. So even these are beneficial bacteria. Like anything, if it's too out of balance, mm. it can have negative effects. So uh, this area um, would indicate then too much inflammation, possibly an effect on blood sugar levels. Mm. Some people with high bacteroidetes uh, have weight issues. That's definitely one of the groups that's been linked to weight. Uh, and I do commonly see that. So uh, with this particular area, we really want to, um, increasing fiber will be beneficial as well because these two groups are usually in ratio to each other. So it's often that I'll see them on opposite ends. So if we're feeding the firmicutes and increasing, uh, you know, the, the diet of fiber and feeding those uh, bacteria, it will naturally bring those It'll down. But also also prebiotic foods, so a lot of your yeah. garlics and onions and your asparagus, um, chicory root and things like that, a really grow fresh chicory if you can find, yeah. um, are, are known to be 
extremely beneficial as you know as prebiotics yeah um, bananas are great. I know bananas are on the, you know, I guess uh, bananas get yeah. a lot of criticism as to their high sugar content, but I think eating them, obviously not when they're really green, yeah, but yeah. you know, if you can eat them when they're only just ripening, yeah. that's a really great prebiotic mm. food as well. So. And proteobacteria. Proteobacteria. So they're that's also up here. Definitely. So with this client, and that's a common picture as well. So anything over that three and a half percent. Um, so this client's got nearly 5%, which is considered to be actually quite high for proteobacteria. And so this indicates dysbiosis. And dysbiosis is an imbalance of, of, you know, of bacteria, but is indicating that there's some, what we have classes, I guess, either infectious or opportunistic bacteria okay. that's there, mm -hmm. that's then causing inflammation as well. So a common one would be E. coli. That's very commonly seen um, as part of that proteo group. So we definitely, there are some beneficial bacteria within that proteo group, but definitely a high reading indicates then that there's a large yeah. level of dysbiosis. And can you break those down further on in the test? You can yes. start to open up the hood definitely yes yeah. definitely so with this report there is another report that comes with this that then looks at every single group and then mm. all those individual species as well so then that's my job to sort of go through and yeah. look for those ones that we know um that yeah we definitely don't want to be you know high or yeah. out of out of their range i suppose it's it's almost like putting together a, a massive puzzle but at the same time mm. it seems that and this is something I love to talk about, the fact that environment and the ongoing environment seems to be quite key. In, mm -hmm. in There's an intrinsic wisdom in the body that when we put it in the right environment, often these things tend to come back into balance. That's right. Would you, would you agree? Or oh, would, definitely, yeah. definitely. And I think for a lot of people who come to see me, they know the things that they should eat and they know the things that they should do, but for whatever reason, they're body has just gone so out of balance that they just don't know where to start mm. and I think there is a lot of amazing information and sometimes it's just having someone who can actually give you those you know step by step yeah um, so with this client for example before we even had these results we really you know his diet wasn't bad but there was definitely areas that we could improve and he had a lot of stress he wasn't sleeping well so we really focused on the nervous system and using some really calming herbs um, I use things like kava and passion flower and magnolia uh, to really you know calm his nervous system during the day but also help him sleep better at night in tea form in capsule form usually i always i, I love herbal teas yeah. um not everyone does but i do recommend you know adding in herbal teas as much as possible more i guess that would be more as as a food source so it's it is helpful but usually in my you know prescriptions i'm using uh you know capsules or tablets of, yeah. of herbal forms that are just a lot more concentrated yeah. um and a lot more specific and i do use a lot of remedies that have been very well proven and tested yeah. as well which i think is important um to be able to you know give your clients the best quality that there is available mm. um and there are uh, and some amazing australian companies um especially there's a lot of new companies too working in this area mm. of microbiome medicine which is really great to see when so. you when you find someone who's got something like e coli in high numbers mm -hmm. is it that trust process of let's put you on a really clean nice diet mm -hmm. and see if it comes down or is it hey look let's use a specific antifungal herb or whatever to to pull it back down yeah i i love my herbal medicine and so in that area of what we call like antimicrobial mm. which is either antibacterial antiviral antiparasitic uh antifungal, antifungal like yeah. you mentioned against candida uh there are some amazing herbal medicine remedies so there is a couple of different ones that i would use um especially yeah for seeing e coli and so what I find is, and for every client, it really does depend on the level. So for some people, it may be a two-week course. For some, it may be a month's course. For some, it may be even a couple of months, depending mm. on what other. So if there is a number of different bacteria showing up to be out of balance, or if there is, uh, I guess, very low levels of beneficial bacteria, then that indicates a longer treatment that yep. we'll need to do. Uh, and then I work very closely with clients too to sort of check in them on a monthly basis to see how they're going yeah. to make sure that we either move on to that next part of the treatment plan if that's where the person as far as their symptoms and how they're feeling or if we need to keep going in that area because mm -hmm. every now and then there might be a client that based on their symptoms we do need to, to, yeah, to go yeah, yeah yeah to go further um especially if there's a lot of um staph or even strep infection yeah. that's showing up mm. which is what are your page. favorite sort of antimicrobials herbs to use so i've got a few few different formulas but i guess you know a lot of them would have um you know similar things like black walnut and wormwood and um portiaco 
uh, sometimes olive leaf you mm -hmm. know extract um, other ones that really support our overall immune system as well so astragalus yeah. or andrographis uh, I use a lot of Chinese herbs as well, um, very hard to pronounce, okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know formulas that have been well proven yeah. as well um, you know, is, is really important and, and sometimes I guess it depends, I mean with this client um, as we go further through the report there were a lot of other, there was quite a high staph level, there was a very high strep level, um, streptococcus and so for, for those they can even be, especially staph is known to be an antibiotic resistant bacteria. Mm. So when I see high levels of those, then I will use a very strong remedy that's actually been proven effective against those bacteria. Yeah. Um, so with this client, actually, that was something that we did too. And do you find so, that, I know there's concern over using even herbal antimicrobials mm -hmm. in terms of their effect on our beneficial bacteria, yes. or do you find that they are sort of quite selective? They, it definitely seems, you know, based on the testing and information that we have, they definitely seem to have a more... Uh, supportive effect to the microbiome yeah. than say antibiotics yeah. um, and I guess that's why a lot of people are now in the, the situation of, as far as you know with their gut health because antibiotics have been overused yeah. um, and they've really bombed the entire microbiome so uh, and that's where these you know antimicrobial remedies will be very targeted to those pathogenic bacteria uh, but still having quite a supportive effect on, on then the beneficial um, mm -hmm. probiotic bacteria and I guess it's it's you know my job to make sure that when I'm recommending those I am recommending those other things alongside to really help that client whether we're working on leaky gut or working on inflammation or even making sure that the client has all the right nutrients that are important for their for a strong immune system so vitamin D is, is such an important mm -hmm. nutrient and a really common deficiency uh, but that's really important. So I'll go through certain questions. Blood tests are helpful as well for certain nutrients. Yeah. And just make sure that they've got, yeah, a lot of those mm. to help as well. It's a holistic approach. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So the microbiome changes very quickly. You probably get mm -hmm. results quite quickly. But mm -hmm. how long do you normally wait before you can expect those sort of... Um, internal results to be mm -hmm. reflected Perfect. in lifestyle in, yes. in our everyday yep it's it it quite it's quite different actually mm. uh, and sometimes i can tell based on the severity of sometimes of someone's symptoms and their health concerns um for this client for example has been on medication for years you know has an autoimmune issue which can definitely be harder to treat or just a longer process time though for this client he actually started to show improvements really really quickly mm. which was amazing he was impressed his doctor was impressed I was, I was like that's great um so sometimes i can tell and sometimes it's you know it really just depends on um where that person is in their journey as well um but probably comes down to a lot of how much that client is willing to change as well that's probably the biggest part yeah. um that you know some people sometimes that process is quite slower because there's other factors you know and people, oh i went on a holiday you know, and or just, <laughs> oh, you know it's just at work i didn't follow the diet no i haven't no i haven't followed your plan and, you know so that that's hard yeah. um but i would say you know in short usually i would say usually a month i usually say because if people get results quicker than that that's great mm. um but i don't want people to think that you know they're going to feel different in two days yeah so i would say you know usually within a month people definitely start to at least feel you know and that might be in their energy or having better sleep or really bloating is the biggest area that i find probably resolves quickly though for some people that can be you know really long lasting as well i guess it depends on what the, the major trigger is um, and then we work on a, a plan over three months and so what I find is most clients in that three month and it's really a step-by-step -step process of you know are we treating any um, you know pathogenic bacteria are we focusing on, on leaky gut are there probiotic levels you know very low to start with or were they actually not too bad and we just need to focus a little bit more with, with diet so over that three months I find most clients will have really really dramatic results uh, and for you know for any that don't we just work on a little bit more of a maintenance so especially when leaky gut is, mm. is present um, things are not just going to totally clear up in, in three months or if there's an autoimmune or other underlying health issues so yeah yeah so then we just extend that out for a little bit love it yeah. so we'll put uh, your details below mm -hmm. it's for people to contact you right if people are sitting on the fence with mm -hmm. this what would you what would you say so 
I think it is amazing that we have this technology mm. available to us. Also amazing that it's here in Australia. I have a lot of clients contact me that say they were searching for microbiome testing and thought they had to send it off to America and yeah. they couldn't find a practitioner that actually knew you know, what this information means. So having access to this is, is, you know, is amazing. And whether it's for long-term health issues, you know, long-term IBS, I have a lot of clients that come to me that I've had IBS for 20 years and I've changed my diet and, you know, I still have these symptoms. Um, you know, for people who have, are on medication or have underlying, whether it's autoimmune or even where their immune system, they're just reacting and, and experiencing colds and flus, yeah. you know, a lot of the time. Um, also, I guess a, a big area would be anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. I find you know, there's a lot of new information now as to looking at the microbiome and how that is important for brain function and our neurotransmitters and our hormones. It's so that would, it's, it yeah. definitely is. And so I would say probably half the clients that come to see me are looking at those areas as far as you know improving their gut health. Mm. And, uh, and, and then even for, for people who have, who really want optimal health, that's yeah. definitely an area that I focus on. I have a lot of clients who are relatively healthy, but they would really like to feel amazing. Yeah. And so having this information to know where else we can focus, you know, on their diet or looking at supporting their overall nervous system, yeah. um, and their hormones and, uh, and for those people, I use I use genetic testing as well. I find mm. that's really really helpful to focus on that real optimal health. So often after um, you know, if we're focusing on microbiome and rebalancing and dealing with inflammation, once we get to a certain point, then I find the genetic testing a great way to look at what other nutrients the body might be deficient in, because there are certain genes that people will have that will cause an enzyme deficiency that then relates to particularly the liver. So it mm. could be the liver or the nervous system. And so then we can really focus on, you know, more of a maintenance and really optimizing their health based on yeah. that information as well. Seems like the advancements in technology are empowering us to really start to get on top of what's going on internally and start to thrive externally. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Love it. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah. me on the Gut Summit. Thanks, Kale. <laughs>